Welcome back to Train Signal Citrix ZenApp Training. You're watching the Installing and Configuring Citrix Licensing lesson. As with any other enterprise application, it is imperative that you understand and know the licensing requirements for the application you're about to deploy. In the case of Citrix ZenApp, it is more than just Citrix licenses that are required. As we've mentioned in earlier lessons, ZenApp is an extension to Microsoft Remote Desktop Services or to Microsoft Terminal Services. Thereby, you have to understand the requirements to fulfill the Microsoft Remote Desktop Services needs or the Terminal Services needs as well. As that is a prerequisite, that is a requirement that would allow you to properly run your ZenApp environment. So in this lesson, we're going to focus on the ZenApp licensing requirements, but we're also going to talk about the remote desktop services requirements. Now, anytime you talk about licensing, depending on when you're going to purchase your licenses, I strongly recommend that you check with Microsoft, that you check with Citrix, just to make sure that nothing has changed. In the licensing world, things change typically from month to month sometimes. So you always want to make sure you have the up-to-date information as far as licensing is required. So in this lesson, we're going to try to lay down the framework, the architectural components that are need to be installed and configured. But when it comes time to licensing, talk to your partners, talk to Microsoft, talk to Citrix, to get the most up-to-date information. We're also going to talk about how you acquire Citrix licenses, what the portal is, where do you go, how do you acquire the license file, what are the components necessary. And of course, we're going to go through an installation of the Citrix license server. We're going to upload a license file, make sure we're all licensed and ready to go, but we're also going to install and configure remote desktop services as well. So from a ZenApp licensing requirements perspective, you'll notice that it's not enough to have the Citrix licenses. You also, again, need your remote desktop services licenses. The Microsoft licensing is in blue, Citrix licenses in green. So what do you need to properly license a ZenApp server? You're going to need an official copy of Windows Server 2008. So you'll need a license for that. You'll need the maintenance on that. It could be in the form of any kind of subscription that Microsoft offers. So depending on the level that you choose, that will dictate the, uh, the maintenance uh, around here. Now you also need terminal services client access licenses. So a regular Windows server has client access licenses known as CALs. The terminal server or remote desktop services has what's known as TS CALs or terminal server client access licenses. Now this is what you need if you're just running remote desktop services without Citrix ZenApp. If you want to add Citrix ZenApp on top of this, you will need your Citrix licenses and you will need your maintenance for the Citrix licenses, which is known as Citrix Subscription Advantage, which gives you access to any product updates during the year, hotfixes, anything that comes out in particular to this product, you automatically are eligible for. Now, from an RDS licensing perspective, you need an RDS license server. You have to install and activate the server, and we're going to do that once we start the demonstration process of this lesson. You also need at least one RDS server is required per domain or per forest, and we'll talk about that. You can install the RDS server. Typically, I like to install the RDS server on a domain controller. Some other folks will install the RDS ser license server on the same server as the Citrix license server. You can most certainly install it on a ZenApp server. Typically, I like it on a domain controller because it, it has the ability to gather information a little better when it's on a domain controller, and because it's domain-wide, the other ZenApp servers or the other clients are able to find it easier when it's on a domain control, but that's a preference, it's not a requirement. We're also going to talk about the RDS licenses, which are the TSCALs. Those you would acquire typically from Microsoft or from your partner. It would be a set of serial number uh, that you input into your license server and that activates X amount of licenses based on what that key combination gives you. We're going to talk about the, the remote desktop license manager, which allows you to tweak and, and manage your licenses, add licenses, remove licenses, so on and so forth. We're also going to talk about the remote desktop license diagnostics uh, tool, which allows you to diagnose any type of issues that are happening from a licenses perspective. You'll be able to go in there and you'll, if there are warnings or errors, you'll be able to take a look at what the error is and it'll help you it'll help point you in the right direction. This is very useful. We never had this prior to Windows 2008, which made diagnosing some of the remote desktop services issues very difficult because there was really no easy mechanism of finding out what was going on. So this diagnostics tool um, helps us understand what the problem is and maybe points us in the right direction to find a solution. So we're going to cover that as well. 
Now, from a Citrix license acquisition standpoint, in order for you to acquire licenses, whether they're eval licenses or actual licenses, product downloads, software, so on and so forth, you want to go to My Citrix. So, in order to access My Citrix, I've put the URL up there. It's www.citrix.com forward slash My Citrix. You can uh, create a, uh, an account, log in, download eval versions. Some of the eval versions are in the download section. So, it depends on what Citrix makes available from an eval perspective. You'll be able to download that or not. You'll be able to acquire permanent, again, or eval licenses. If you've bought Citrix official Citrix licenses they're delivered to you via an email you take the serial number that is available in the email and you register it in your my Citrix that automatically generates a license file and that license file is uploaded into the Citrix server now during the acquisition of that license file on my Citrix you're gonna to get to a point and we'll talk about that again once we go through the demonstration I won't be able to demonstrate the whole process but I'm gonna point you in the right direction but as you're going through the acquisition process of these licenses you're gonna to get to a point where they're gonna ask you for the actual host name of your Citrix license server pay attention that the license server host name is case sensitive so if it's all uppercase make sure you input it as all uppercase if it's lowercase so on and so forth you download the license file from the my Citrix portal you upload that license file on your license server and bada bing bada boom you are ready to go from my Citrix you can obviously also install software or download software updates hot fixes so on and so forth so without further ado let's go ahead and jump into the demonstration so what we're going to do now is we're going to install the remote desktop services licensing server and I've chosen to install that on my domain controller now for the purposes of our example and because the lab is limited what I'm also going to do is I'm going to install the Citrix license server also on this domain controller in your environment I wouldn't necessarily recommend that you install any applications on your domain controller I would probably isolate my license server from a Citrix perspective and an RDS perspective on their own VM so I would have one VM for both services but for the purposes of my example we're going to put both of them on the same machine so in order to get started and install RDS licensing server we're gonna bring up the server manager and we're going to add a role we're gonna click next to start here and I'm going to select remote desktop services so click on next and we are gonna go ahead and install remote desktop licensing now during the presentation portion of this lesson we talked about the remote desktop diagnostics tool now in order for you to access the remote desktop diagnostics tool the remote desktop session host would have to be installed now considering this is a domain controller it is not advisable for you to install remote desktop services session host on it so you don't want to turn this domain controller into a terminal services basically so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and install it without it and then we'll install remote desktop session host on our Zen app server and I'll show you how you can use the remote desktop diagnostics tool from there so we're gonna go ahead and select remote desktop licensing we're gonna click on next and this pretty much tells you hey what is the scope for the remote desktop licensing what do you want the scope to be so in my case if you select the configure discovery scope for this license server you can select this domain or you can select this forest I'm gonna go ahead and select this forest I only have one domain anyway only have one user for the purposes of your your environment you'll have to select accordingly but I'm just gonna do it forest wide that way it'll be easier to discover and find as far as the database is concerned I'm just gonna leave it at uh, the default location it's a very very small database so it's not really gonna make a difference click on next here and install I mean it's literally it's gonna take a few seconds to install here there's really nothing to it and once it's installed we'll be able to launch the license management console and we'll be able to activate that server there it's installed successfully we're gonna click on close to exit out of here we're also gonna close server manager now if you come up here to administrative tools under the remote desktop services you'll notice that you now have a bunch of tools or applications that you can run so the first thing you want to do is run remote desktop license manager or licensing manager this brings up the server and you'll notice that the server is not activated at this point so you won't be able to use it or install any type of licensing on it at this point you want to make sure you have the serial number for your licenses so that once we activate the server you can add your available licenses now one thing to keep in mind after you've activated the server you're gonna have a grace period of 120 days where you get eval licenses 
And people fall into this mistake a lot. In the Windows 2003 days, the licensing from Microsoft, whether it's per user or per device, was based on the honor system, which means Microsoft never enforced it. So if you went over the 120 days, you would get some issues in some instances, but you can get around it. With Windows 2008, that is enforced. So if you go beyond the 120 days, terminal services are going to stop responding. Users are going to start, will not be able to connect to terminal server or remote desktop services, even from your Zen app server. So you'll have a lot of issues. So it's best to avoid these by properly planning your RDS licensing. So let's go ahead and activate the server. We're going to right click it here and we are going to drag down to where it says activate server. And there's a couple of different ways where you can, by which you can activate the server. You can do it over the internet, as I'm going to do. You can do it um, via a web browser or via the telephone. So we're going to do it automatically here. Now Microsoft will collect a bunch of information. You'll have to give it um, some information here in order to register or activate the server. And let's just do NCOM. Right, to click on Next. From an email address perspective, we're going to do tron at ncom.com. Organizational unit, let's just do IT. We're going to leave everything else empty here. Let's go ahead and do shy town for the city, state, and let's do this for the zip code. Now you'll notice that the activation is complete. It's asking, do you want to start the install of the license wizard now? For the purposes of this demo, let's just click no and finish. So the server is now activated. So at this point, you have the ability of adding licenses if you wanted to add licenses to this particular server. Now, before we go ahead and add the licenses, which you can enable by just clicking on the install license here, one thing to pay attention to is you now have the ability to create reports. This is another thing that we had difficulty with with prior versions of Windows, like with 2003 and earlier, where it was difficult to generate any type of usage reports on the user cals that are in use. So with Windows 2008, this is pretty cool because now you can generate a per user cal usage report and be able to justify if you want more licenses or if you're reaching a, th a certain threshold. Now, if you wanted to install licenses, the wizard is very simple. You click on install licenses, you go through the wizard, and at this point, you, you should have the serial number from your Microsoft partner or from Microsoft itself, wherever you're getting it from, so that you can install these particular licenses within your license server. And you'll notice here you have different types of license programs that you can use, and you should select whichever one you have purchased. So we're not going to go through this wizard. We are going to operate off of our 128 or 120 day eval licenses for our purposes, but make sure you license your RDS server properly so now that we have activated this let's go get out of here for a second let's take a look at the other tools real quick so if we drag back up to remote desktop services you obviously have the remote desktop services manager we're not going to go into that that's outside of the scope uh, this is just for basically managing terminal server the remote desktop session host configuration now this is typically where you can um, use the licensing diagnosis diagnosis tool here but since we don't have the session host role added we won't be able to see that but we're going to take care of that when we log into the Zen app server and we'll be able to take a look and see what this can offer us in terms of well if I have a licensing issue how much more information it will give me so this covers the remote desktop services licensing server and license installation portion now let's go ahead and install the Citrix licensing so I've downloaded the bits for Zen app here and we're going to go ahead and run auto run. Now you'll notice that with Citrix Zen App 6, Citrix has pretty much mimicked what Microsoft has done from a server role based perspective. So Citrix now also has the ability to do roles for the different types of servers. So if you wanted a licensed server, that's a role. If you wanted a web interface server, that's a role. If you wanted a Zen App server, that's a role. So Citrix also has its own role manager, role based manager. Now, if you're not comfortable with, with Windows 2008 or the role-based access and all that stuff, TrainSignal does offer the Windows Server 2008 training, which I also highly recommend. But for those of you that are familiar with this, that are comfortable with this, Zen App 6 follows the same types of type of concept in that it offers 
roles for the servers now. So what I want to do is I want to install ZenApp Server, but I don't want to install the server itself. I want to install a component of it, which means the role manager is now going to run and ask me, hey, what do you want to do with this particular server? And there you go. You'll notice that the Citrix server role manager has launched. What do you want to do? I want to add a server role. What level of Citrix, what edition of licensing do you have for your Citrix? We're going to go with Enterprise. I'm going to accept the license agreement. And I'm just going to install the license server at this point. See, again, here's where you can make it into a ZenApp server, into a web interface, so on and so forth. We're sticking with license server. Default components, we're going to click on Next. And we are going to install. Again, again the installation is very, very straightforward, very, very easy. Click on Finish here. It's already installed, now we got to configure it. So I'm going to click on configure. Part of the configuration, you want to make sure you pay attention to the default ports that are configured here. The license server is on port 27,000. Again, pay attention to this. This you know, might very well be on the CCA exam. The vendor daemon is on port 7279. And the management console for the web portal is on 8082. And you can change any of these if any of them are in use. However, for the exam, make sure you understand what the defaults are just in case it comes up. The username is by default admin. So all you have to do is give it a password here. So I'm going to give it just my standard password. And that will conclude the configuration portion of the license server. So now it's configured. We're going to click on close and we're going to actually exit out of all of these windows. And now let's go ahead and launch license management console programs, Citrix management license administration console. Once it comes up, the uh, initial screen is just basically the dashboard view. tells you which licenses are installed. This is by default the license um, that gets installed with any edition of Citrix. These are just internal licenses that you get. It's like a starter pack. On the left here, if there are any errors, any warnings, you'll see them here. Now, in order for us to administer the license server, we're going to have to go in through the administration. We're going to give it the admin username and the password that we just configured. And we're going to click on submit. No, I don't want you to remember. First thing you're going to do is some system information. This is just very basic information. Release version, which build of the license server. Very basic information here. User configuration. If you wanted to add more users that are able to launch the license server console and administer this, and you have several types of users that you can do here, you can add a regular user, which is just a read-only user. They can log in, browse around, see what's configured, any thresholds that are being uh, reached, so on and so forth. And then you have the administrator role, which allows the user to manipulate the settings of the license server, add more licenses, etc. The alert configuration allows you to, again, configure a lot of alerts, especially if any if you want to configure any thresholds that could be breached. So if you're reaching any limits on your license server, it will throw an error, a warning or send you a message, something like that. So you can configure those down here. So this is very, very basic information that you get with any, any type of uh, management console per se. And then you have the server configuration over here. It's just the web server configuration, uh, which ports it's running on. Uh, how many threads, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you have the secure web server. If you wanted to secure it, you can configure that over here. The license server configuration. Again, it's telling you that it's running on port 27,000. Maximum number of license server management process threads, etc. You have your logging unless there's something going on with uh, the license server. I wouldn't recommend you change the log level. But if there's anything tricky going on, you can change the warning levels or you can, you can tweak it so that you get more information out of it. And then you have the user interface where you can change certain attributes of the user interface to your liking. Now, the most important part of this is obviously the vendor daemon here configuration, which allows us to import the license file after we've downloaded it from my Citrix. So before we actually go ahead and install the license file, let's go and take a tour of my Citrix so that we see where we get this license file from. So what I'm going to do is open another tab in Internet Explorer here and then we're going to go to 
citrix.com forward slash my citrix. Now, once you get to my citrix, you can log in with your username and password, or you can create an account here. This is what it's going to look like. These are some of the things that you can do. You can act the activation system. Once you buy Citrix licenses, you're going to get a serial number via email. You'll be able to go into the activation system manager here, put in that license key, go through the wizard. The wizard is going to ask you for the host name of your license server. This is important. The host name of the license server is case sensitive. Now, if you don't know the host name of your license server, one easy way of finding it is if you open a command line here on the, the license server and you just type in host name, voila, it'll return the host name of the server in the format that Citrix likes it. So make sure you copy this accordingly, paste it on your uh, in the wizard here. It's going to go through the wizard, generate the license file, you'll be able to download the license file, it'll have a .lic extension, and you'll be able to take that file and upload it into the Citrix license server. Let me show you what it looks like if we go ahead and log in here. Now I'm using eval licenses, so I wouldn't be able to show you exactly the whole process, but I wanted to show you what the MyCitrix page looks like. So once you're in here, if you choose the toolbar and you go up to the activation system, you'll be able to click on Activate Allocate. We're going to click on I Agree. Now the serial number that's delivered via email, this is where you would put it in and you click on Continue and it would take you through the whole process of activating or generating the Citrix license file that you can then download. Now before we move away from my Citrix, one of the other things that I wanted to show you is if you click on the downloads page here, there are certain software that Citrix will allow you to um, evaluate. So for example, Zen Desktop Express, you'll be able to evaluate that. But from the drop down menu here, you'll be able to select whichever application you're trying to evaluate if you don't have a Citrix account, and it'll tell you if it's available for an evaluation or not. Now, if your company is also a uh, Citrix partner or a Citrix customer, you'll be able to have register a, a username and password and have an account to log into My Citrix. Uh, for for the other, you know, for if you don't have a, a partner or if you're not an existing Citrix customer, again, click on the downloads link here and it'll tell you which software you're able to evaluate. Otherwise, contact a partner, Citrix partner, in your area if you want to evaluate a software that's not readily available off of the My Citrix portal. Now, once you've downloaded the, the, the .lic file, you're going to click on the vendor daemon here. We're going to click on Browse. I've downloaded it to the desktop. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. And we are going to select Overwrite Existing License Files. And we are going to import it. Well, I'm going to ignore this error for now. You're going to get this error with inconsistencies. It's got uh, something to do with how Citrix's uh, license server works. It doesn't recognize the host name properly, so on and so forth. But if I click on the dashboard, I should technically see all of my licenses. And voila, there you go. Now, if for whatever reason you don't see the licenses after you've uploaded the file, two things you can do. Uh, go to your services, restart the Citrix licensing server. Sometimes it takes a while before these licenses show up. So restarting the license server forces it to reread the license file and boom, it'll just show up um, again. You can reboot the server. That's worst case scenario. So now you'll see all of these licenses that you have access to. And if there are any warnings or any errors that they, you, they would show up on the left here, we've just installed this. So we don't have any errors left. So we're not going to even worry about that. But this is Citrix licensing in a nutshell. As you can see, there's really nothing to it. What I'm going to do now is we are going to switch back to the presentation portion of the lesson so we can wrap up what we've learned. All right, so let's wrap up this lesson. What have we covered? So we started by talking about the ZenApp licensing requirements and how you have some Microsoft server requirements in the form of you need a Windows 2008 R2 server license. You need the maintenance on that. And then on top of that, you need your terminal services client access licenses. That covers the Microsoft portion of the licenses. And then if you want to use ZenApp, you obviously add the Citrix portion 
of the licenses which are in the form of the actual Citrix licenses that are concurrent and then the maintenance on that which is your subscription advantage the yearly maintenance that gives you access to updated software hotfixes so on and so forth we talked about the different components of the remote desktop services licensing we talked about RD license manager the diagnostics tool we talked about how you need to install and activate a license server and I'm suggesting you can install it on a domain controller you can install it on the Citrix license server so we covered that we did a quick walkthrough of the my Citrix showed you where you can go to download the software how you can acquire the license file so on and so forth and then we wrapped up the lesson by going through the installation process of the Citrix license server of the Microsoft RDS license server and I showed you the diagnostics tool and the remote desktop license management finally I hope this lesson was informative and I'd like to thank you for viewing